Hey everyone, uh, third time's the charm, having some trouble recording this thing properly today. Um, but uh, let's try once more, I'm gonna try to keep it short. Basically one stuff thing, um, stuff thing, thing I wanna show. Um, Stefan Glückselig asked on YouTube, so he's saying I'm doing this with my kids or at least I wanna show some cool stuff to my kid. Um, and I stumbled into a cave and I wanted to automate some of the tunneling, but not just, you know, like, replace a whole bunch of blocks with air and have a tunnel in one go but sort of see see the process of sort of digging out the tunnel um and so um yeah i i figured that's a nice challenge let's see what we can do with that okay so here we are in our world um and um, i'm just gonna put myself in front of a hill or a mountain uh, and let's say that we're gonna tunnel uh, in that direction. So say we're gonna tunnel. So this seems like kind of a, yeah, it's a little more stony and chunky here. Let's say yeah. Let's say we want to start here, right? This this is where we're gonna start tunneling. So okay. First of all, I actually um, added a wrapper for one more method that uh, Bucket has that we didn't wrap yet, which is break naturally. So when you break a block naturally, um, it'll actually drop what what it would drop if you would sort of break it in the world um it'll also give the the sound of breaking and stuff like that um so uh you know that that might already be be a part of the puzzle um but so now i can actually want this kind of stateful iterative process where we where we dig you know have sort of a, a central position that digs its way into the mountain um, and so i'm going to do this with an atom capturing this starting position. Um, then I also need to see here, so we are facing towards negative Y. Um, so basically I'm going to um, change this position step by step to always you know, continue towards negative Y. Uh, and then on the X and Z axis, I'm gonna either stay the same, zero, or maybe go up or go down, go left or go right. So we sort of start, you know, like tunneling my meandering into the mountain, but always going forward in one direction. Um, and then I'm going to use the shapes API to say, okay, well, you know, figure out a ball shape around this center position with a certain radius and a, you know, zero, or actually in this case, I'm using minus one because of some running errors. I could say it's a bug actually, but so this way we get a solid ball. Um, if you leave this inner radius off, then it's sort of going to give you a ball of like thickness one. So it's only going to cut out sort of like the shell of the ball and not the whole ball. And so, you know, basically I'm going to run break naturally over this thing as if we would break this thing with a diamond, actually let's say a diamond pickaxe. Um, and then as a last step, uh, sort of on average, every third iteration, I'm gonna take this central position of where we're currently digging and go one up um, and actually maybe go, so we're going towards negative X, right? Wait, so I need to do this right, huh? Yeah, towards negative X. Okay, so actually don't have this right. So yeah, now I'm always going towards negative X. And then let's say, you know, the position where we just were, so if I add one X and then go one up, there I'm gonna hang a lantern. Now, I tried this before, and the problem that I faced was that I kept breaking the, the lantern on the next iteration. Um, so that's why I'm gonna remove anything that's already a lantern in the world. Um, yeah, I guess I can do this. Maybe a little cleaner. So yeah, let's see if that still works. So I'm gonna make sure I start at the block that I'm looking at, and then let's start digging. Oh yeah, it's actually going a little deeper so okay dig dig okay there's our first lantern dig 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 and another lantern and we're digging and so yeah we're we're digging we're definitely digging into the mountain um, and then maybe here let's say that I want to you know continue digging that way uh, so this is towards negative Z then uh, Let's change this minus one and also put our lantern here one 
back along the z axis. Yeah, so now we're going that way. Oh, and I think we found another cave. Yeah, nice. Uh, let's see if we do one more. Do we get a nice step up? Yeah, cool. Oh, I think this was a previous cave that I was digging into. Uh, yeah, so let's say that here, you know, we want to go back this way. Anyway, you get you get my drift, right? Um, yeah, so Stefan, I hope that was helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, this will be the last of my uh, witchcraft videos for a while, probably. Um, it's been fun making them. It's also been a good impetus to, to improve some of the library a bit. Um, and yeah, I hope that, that people who watch them will maybe find time over the holidays, uh, over the end of year period, to uh, you know, get get Minecraft installed and and get their REPL warmed up and and see what they can do with them. Um, I've been you know throwing out these seeds, these these basically invitations for people to to try stuff with it, um, and I I really hope to see people do creative stuff with them and and sharing their own work, uh, whether it's in in screenshots or videos or code. Um, you know, you can find me on Twitter. There's a Minecraft channel on Clodurian Slack. Um, there's of course the Lambda Islands Discord uh, where we hang out and talk about this stuff. So yeah, I really uh, hope that we're going to start seeing other people doing stuff with this and uh, and sharing their stuff because I think it's a great engine for just sort of you know creative programming. Um, and uh, you know, there's a couple different things you can do with this, right? Like so, like what are my goals with this project? So I mean, I'm just having fun. Uh, I'm trying to do stuff that is also engaging for my nephews who are really into Minecraft. Um, but it's so open-ended that, that yeah, like I'm kind of curious what, what other people do with it. Um, so something that I could, for instance, imagine is that actually people come up with their sort of own RPG campaigns, you know, where they use their own generated structures, but also kind of have sort of a, a like a D&D &D dungeon master uh, you know, like sitting there with their REPL sort of as a god over the world, uh, manipulating things live as as the players sort of, you know, make their way through through the story. Um, so I think there's there's like interactive storytelling that, that could be done with this. I also think that just as a voxel engine, you know, playing around with the, with the palettes that you get um, is a lot of fun and and definitely has some some interesting implications actually speaking of palettes that's actually one thing that i've never managed to cover in these videos so far but actually let me do a quick shout out to the palette namespace um so i generated uh this file material colors which has the the two most prominent colors of every texture and so with that you can start thinking about uh color distances so you can find the color distance between two materials um, or you can find the nearest material to a specific color um, or you can sort of generate a gradient between one uh, one material and another material and sort of figure out which materials go in the middle um, and so forth like it's really gives you some some cool stuff to, to play around with um, neighbors is a nice starting point so let's say you know like oh i want to do something you know, I want I want some some shades of red, right? So then uh, I can just say like palette neighbors um, red concrete maybe or, or red wool, um, and so this this will give you all materials. But I just want to get like the top one, so let's maybe get like twenty, right? And now sort of get like the things that are closest in color to red concrete, and you see the distance like a red shulker box is almost the same as. Uh, red concrete so let's let's maybe say a set block um, target block uh, red concrete right so that's what red concrete looks like whereas then a red shulker box looks like that and another word block looks like that and so that's you know you if you look at minecrafters um, you know a lot of what they do is is this it's basically saying, okay, you know, like how can we sort of find a nice palette of things that go together um, to to sort of get, you know, aesthetically pleasing um, combinations, builds. Um, 
and so yeah that's that's uh i think this is one of the fun things that you can do with this with this palette namespace kind of like i mean you can let it generate paddles for you um but i think mostly it's going to be a matter of sort of like letting it generate something and then kind of tweaking it manually um so that's one more thing i wanted to shout out um yeah and please you know if you do stuff with it make a gist of your code make a screenshot you know share it on the twitter share it on clojury and slack um let people know because i i would love to see you know all, all the the work i've put into this in, in the last year uh being put to use um and it would also just be great as as examples and as motivation for others uh, so that hopefully eventually we can get a, a little bit of a of a community a little bit of interaction around this stuff so that there's people around who can sort of help each other out and and just all together have a have a good and creative time so with that i'm signing off and i wish you all a, a wonderful end of the year and uh yeah hopefully i'll be back with more content in the new year so have a good one